Uh, welcome back to fifth like, session on unit number six, dimensional analysis and similitude. Uh, this session, we are going to discuss the model analysis and similitude part, that is the second part of dimensional analysis. Already we have covered uh, the dimensional analysis technique, uh, that is Buckingham Pi theorem, uh, followed by important dimensionless numbers. Now, the next part, which is uh, really important as far as the application point of view, that is a model analysis and similarity. Uh, in order to know about the performance of hydraulic structure, especially large structures like dam, spillways, etc., or hydraulic machines like turbines, pumps, etc., before actually constructing or manufacturing them, their models are made and tested to get the required information. Uh, because uh, uh, these are the uh, trunky projects. So uh, before actual manufacturing, their design has to be validated. And that particular design is validated with the help of models, uh, and the small models, comparatively small models. So the model is a small scale replica of actual structure or machine. Uh, the actual structure or machine is called as prototype. The models are not always smaller than prototype. Uh, in some cases, model may be even larger or of same size as a prototype, depending upon the need and purpose. Example given working of wristwatch or a carburetor or even nano turbine uh, can be studied in a large scale model because sometimes it is very difficult to perform uh, the trial on a very small device or tiny devices. So there, models are bigger than the prototype. So this is about the introductory portion. The advantages of model testing, the following are the advantages of model analysis or model testing. So model tests are quite economical and convenient uh, because the design, construction and operation of a model may be changed several times if necessary without increasing much expenditure. Still, a most uh, suitable design is obtained. So by trial and error method, you can make the changes in model. So it is quite economical and convenient as well, uh, instead of making the changes in actual prototype. Especially large devices, it is economical and convenient. With the use of models, the performance of hydraulic structures, hydraulic machines can be predicted in advance. While designing a particular portion of the structure, if clear-cut analytical and reliable method is not available, then in such cases, it becomes absolutely necessary to know about the safety and reliability of such parts, which is possible by means of model testing. So because in some cases, uh, it is very risky that if you perform this uh, failure testing or failure analysis on actual prototype and to avoid some calamities, so you know, the, these testings are carried out by means of model testing. Model testing uh, can be used to detect and rectify the defects of an existing structure which is not functioning properly. So if any actual structure is not functioning properly, their same model is made and uh, same defects can be recognized using model testing. These are some advantages. Applications of model testing following are the important fields where uh, this model testing is applied and is of great use. Civil engineering structures such as dams, spillways, weirs, canals, etc. Then flood control investigation of silting and soar in rivers, irrigation channels, because these are the large structures. It is not found economical to perform the trial error method on actual system or actual locations. So then turbine pumps and compressor, especially uh, at the large scale, the turbine pumps and compressors are used in power plant. Their model testing is uh, essential or it is um, convenient as well. Then design of harbors, ships and submarines, then aeroplane rockets and missiles, uh, then tall buildings to predict the wind loads on buildings, the stability characteristics of the building and airflow patterns in their vicinity. So 
So that is also done uh, actually in the on the model, and if there are some corrections, that can be incorporated in actual paper. So especially these uh, all these application are at a very large scales. So their performance testing is generally carried out with the help of model, and that model testing results uh, can be used to predict the performance of actual systems. The simulated is nothing but to find the solutions to numerous complicated problems in hydraulic engineering and fluid mechanics uh, model studies. Uh, they are conducted usually uh, in these applications and in order that the results obtained in model studies represent the behavior of prototype. Uh, that means the actual performance of model uh, that represents the behavior of prototype. But the following three similarities must be ensured between the model and prototype. That is, uh, both must be geometrically similar, kinematically similar, and dynamically similar. So as far as the geometric similarity is concerned, for geometric similarity to exist between model and prototype, the ratios of corresponding length in the models and in the prototype must be same. And the included angles between two corresponding sides must be the same. Models which are geometrically similar, models which are not geometrically similar are known as geometrically distorted models. Suppose let uh, LM is the length of the model, BM is the breadth of the model, HM is the height of the model, BM is the diameter of the model. VM is the area of the model. VM is the volume of the model. And uh, the other quantities that is LP, BP, HP, DP, AP, and VP. These are the corresponding values of the prototype. Then for geometrically, uh, geometric similarity, we must have the relation. That is their length ratios, their height ratios, their diameter ratios, their Red ratios, all these ratios must be uh, same. And that ratio is called as LR. That is actually called as a scale ratio or scale factor. So suppose uh, a length ratio is two and breadth ratio is three. So it is not acceptable. It is geometrically distorted. So if length ratio is one, breadth ratio, diameter ratio, and height ratio has to be one. So then and then that particular uh, uh, that particular model and prototype are called as geometric similar. So similarly uh, model and prototype must be have same area ratios that is AM by AP that is called as the uh, area scale or volume scale because it depends on length. So for geometrically similar objects, so for model and prototype, they must satisfy their, these are the factor, the scale factor, area factor, and volume. These factors are important. And based on these factors, the dimensions are uh, defined for, or is generally uh, done by model and prototype. So this is about the geometric similarity. As far as kinematic similarity is concerned, uh, it is the similarity of motion. And if at the corresponding points in the model and in the prototype, the velocity or acceleration ratios are same, and velocity or acceleration vector point in same direction, then the two flows are said to be kinematically similar. That is flow over model and flow over uh, prototype. So the flow over model and prototype must be kinematically similar and for that their velocities ratios dynamic uh, acceleration ratios are same suppose for example v1m is the velocity of fluid at point one in the body v2m is the velocity of fluid at point two in the body a1m is the acceleration of fluid at point one in the body or a2m is the acceleration of fluid at point in the model and the corresponding values of 
uh, velocity acceleration in the prototype. And then the kinematic similarity, then for kinematic similarity, we have V1 in both cases, that is at the same location in the model and prototype, that must be equal to the EM uh, V2 of model and prototype ratio. That ratio is called as a velocity ratio. So velocity ratio is not nothing, not nothing but velocity at one point in model and second point at prototype. These two velocity, it is not like that. It is the velocity at the model at one particular point to the velocity at prototype at the same point. Their ratios. So their ratio must be same. So suppose this ratio is two, this ratio is three, it is not acceptable. Both ratios should be same. Similarly for acceleration also, the ratio should be same, that is called as acceleration ratio. The direction of the velocities in the model and prototype should be same. If we are considering the dimension uh, direction, suppose along positive x direction, it should be positive x direction in model x. Uh, geometrically, uh, geometric similarity is a prerequisite for kinematic similarity because unless and until uh, both model and prototype are geometrically similar, uh, the kinematic similarity cannot be performed. Because that is actually once the geometry, uh, the model and prototype are geometrically similar, then we can calculate velocity acceleration. So this is about kinematic similarity. As far as dynamic similarity is concerned, uh, it is the similarity of forces. Obviously, um, as per the definition of dynamic, it takes into account the forces causing the motion. So it is related with the similarity of forces. The flow in the model and in the prototype are dynamically similar. If at all the corresponding points, identical types of forces are parallel and they are the same ratio. Suppose Fi for model is inertia force, at a point in the model, FVM is the viscous force at the point in the model, then FGM is the gravity force at the point in the model, and the remaining quantities that is FIP, FVP, and FGP, they are corresponding values of the forces at the corresponding points in the prototype. Then for dynamic similarity, we have the ratio of same type of force, so that is Fi of model and Fi of prototype. That must be equal to Fe of model and Fe of prototype. That must be equal to Fg of model and Fg of prototype. Uh, that Fr is called as a force ratio. So in actual practice, it is very difficult to match this force ratio. Uh, the direction of uh, of the corresponding forces at the corresponding points in the model and prototype should be same. So the similar type of forces, suppose inertia force and pressure force, their magnitudes are different, their intensities are different. In actual practice, the force ratio, maintenance of force ratio is a little bit difficult. You can maintain one type, so that is Fi uh, of model and Fi of that that force ratio we can, but it is not possible every time to maintain the same ratio for viscosity and gravity. So for that, uh, some model laws are developed. That they, these laws are also called as the similarity laws to ensure this dynamic similarity between the model and prototype. Uh, it is necessary that the ratio of corresponding forces acting at corresponding points in the model and prototype be made equal. It implies that dimensionless numbers should be same for model as well as prototype. This condition is difficult to satisfy for all dimensionless numbers, like uh, especially uh, because uh, whatever the dimensionless number we have studied, each dimensionless numbers the forces are different. So for all type of forces, it is very difficult. So hence models are designed on the basis of the force which is dominating in the flow situation. Already we have discussed in dimensionless numbers. So particular number is only dominant in that flow situation. So 
Thus, the laws on which the models are designed for dynamic similarity are called as a model of similarity laws. Means for that, uh, these similarity laws are used. Means in these laws, depending upon the forces dominant, we can choose the particular law. So these laws are nothing but Reynolds model law, Rodin model law, then Euler's model law, Weber model law, and Mac model law. So depending upon the dominance of the forces, if viscous forces are dominant, then Reynolds model law is used. If gravity force is dominant, then Froude model law is used. If pressure gradient exists, in that situation, Euler model is used. If surface tension is dominant over the other forces, then Weber model is used. And if the for compressible flow, generally the elastic forces or Compressibility is uh, not negligible in that case. Mac model is used. So, if we use this particular uh, laws for solve for solving dynamic similarity, then it becomes easy because in that in this laws, any one force is dominant. So we can neglect the other forces, and we can do the dynamic similarity only for that particular. Force. For dynamic Reynolds number, we only do the dynamic similarity of viscous forces. Like that here with gravity forces, here pressure forces, surface tension forces, and elastic forces. So these models law, uh, they are especially used to ensure dynamic similarity between models. When the, uh, in, when we cannot get the same pressure ratio or we cannot get the same force ratio in all the all types of forces. So that's it from this session. Uh, at the end of this session, at least we will be able to discuss model testing with its advantages and applications where generally it is applied. You will come to know. You will be able to explain the similarity. Uh, that is uh, what uh, what we what what is uh, geometric similarity, what is dynamic similarity dynamic similarity and at the end uh, you will be able to list different models to be used for dynamic similarity depending upon the forces later sessions will discuss the model individual models and their application and also how to implement these model laws for solving numericals with this uh, we end this session thank you very much